it's time for the Navy to select qualified candidates to fill critical leadership roles necessary to keep the world's most powerful Navy manned and ready to meet its mission. Now let's explore how this selection board process works. Selection boards, which include statutory boards, administrative boards, milestone screenings, and administrative selection, all have a similar framework. This familiar framework is designed to allow the Navy to select the best of the fully qualified candidates. The selection process starts with the release of overarching guidance to the board called precepts. These precepts are used to guide the selection process. Statutory board precepts provide general guidance for functions and procedures of the current fiscal year. There are more than one precept for boards, and in this video, we will focus on statutory promotion selection boards. A convening order is issued for each selection board, giving authority to convene the board with information containing the date, time, and location of the board. An official list of board membership is included in the convening order, listing membership, recorders, assistant reporters, and administrative support. The best and fully qualified standard is defined in the convening order that explains the standard by which candidates are evaluated. This standard dictates any skill requirements and additional considerations the board should include to ensure accuracy of each candidate's record evaluation. The convening order is routed through the chain of command for the eventual SECNAV approval. Eligible candidates' official military personnel files, or OMPF, are verified and loaded into the selection board systems. Board recorders arrive one week before a board convening day. The recorders verify the records loaded into the selection board systems. It is always encouraged for eligible candidates to review the accuracy of their records prior to any board. Each eligible candidate with information or has a concern that any portion needs to have an explanation to the board has the legal right to submit a letter to the board or an LTB, which will be briefed by other board members as a requirement of the process. In order to have an eligible candidate's LTB accurately submitted for the board, it must be received no later than 10 days prior to the convening board. Letters to the board can be submitted in various methods, such as the ESSBD or Electronic Submission of Selection Board Documents, which is often the primary method of submission. The ESSBD is located on MyNavy.mil, in the MyNavy portal, and also on Boopers Online. Other methods of sending an LTB are through email to the address display, along with conventional mail through the post office to the following address. Now that preparation is complete, the board process begins. Board members report to Wood Hall aboard Naval Support Activity Mid-South in Millington, Tennessee to review precepts and the convening order. The board starts at 0800 on the convening day, which members will be welcomed aboard, followed by board member and recorder's oaths taken. A SECNAV brief is conducted prior to board deliberations, then transitioning into training on the selection board systems. Above zone and in zone records are randomly distributed among the board members to review and grade. Board members have access to all fit reps, awards, and other information within each candidate's official record. Once each record has been reviewed and graded, a summary report is generated for use in the following board process, known as the tank. Board members then transition into the tank, where eligible records will be displayed and briefed by the members. The tank is a briefing room set up to display summary record information on each individual candidate. Each record is briefed by the board member who evaluated the record and wrote the briefing notes on the summary sheets displayed in the tank. Prior to the first brief, the president of the board will emphasize any critical information from the precept or convening order that he or she wants the board to keep in mind. Once the board members are seated, they receive handheld wireless voting boxes that allows them to vote on each record. The head recorder will start off the session by checking that all of the voting boxes are working correctly, and then the president will start the briefing and voting. Each record is briefed by the reviewing board member while the other board members vote their confidence level in that record. The wireless voting boxes allow board members to vote using a confidence factor with increments of 100, 75, 50, 
25, and 0. Any confidence factor voted other than 0 is considered a yes vote. After each vote, the head recorder records the vote and calls the number of yes votes with the overall confidence factor prior to moving on to the next record. This is repeated for every record until all records have been briefed and voted, wherein the results are triple checked and a scattergram with all of the results is generated. Now that voting in the tank has occurred, a scattergram will appear which is a visible overview of how briefed candidates are categorized. Once all above zone and in zone records have been briefed and voted, a scattergram is displayed showing the cumulative number of records at each confidence level. The columns on the scattergram show the selection status, possible confidence scores, number of eligible candidates with the confidence score, and cumulative number of tentative selects, non-selects, and crunch records as the tentative select and non-select lines change. Each of the confidence levels can be seen as follows. Candidates who are tentatively selected are in green category. These candidates' records scored 90 or above in the score column. Candidates who are in the blue category will be reviewed a second time, which is referred to as the crunch records. Candidates who are to be dropped are in the red category and will no longer remain for consideration. When above zone and end zone candidates are accepted by the board president, below zone records will be viewed in senior order and board members will conduct a yes or no vote on each record based on whether the record is competitive for promotion. When below zone records are voted, a new scattergram will display for voting on drop records. Records not dropped will be added into the above zone and in zone crunch for another review. Community representatives from the candidates designators are provided to ensure a record is reviewed accordingly during a second review. Voting occurs after each brief to determine a confidence factor. The head recorder calls the number of yes votes and overall confidence factor. An updated scattergram displays all records voted on and the floor opens to voting motions to tentatively select or drop records. Records neither tentatively selected or dropped during voting will repeat the crunch process until all selections are filled or remaining do not meet selection criteria. Title 10 U.S. Code enables SECNAV to authorize certain promotion selection boards to recommend eligible officers or particular merit to be placed higher on the promotion list than their seniority-based lineal number normally would allow. The records receive a full record review under SECNAV approved merit reorder criteria. All merit reorder records get briefed and voted in the tank. Officers selected for merit reorder will be placed in seniority, lineal order, and presented to the board. The board will then vote to confirm the names on the list. If there is no merit reorder desired, then the board votes to confirm the list. If the board decides to reorder the list based on merit, they will determine the order and then revote the list. All merit reorder selectees will be promoted on October 1st and will stay in seniority order for promotion. The reorder of the merit reorder selectees only affects the all nav notification to show who was chosen as number one of the group. When the tentative select list has been verified by two board members, a vote will occur to confirm the selection. This vote certifies the sanctity and integrity of the selection board process. Board members will then sign the certification signature pages, which accompany the board's record of proceedings, and the board president makes closing remarks and adjourns the board. Now that you've gone through all the steps required of a board member, you can see how each phase of the promotion and merit reorder process is designed to select the best of the Navy's qualified candidates for promotion to a higher pay grade.